Yes, tick tock, tick tock. Time is ticking on the American Empire. We are going to continue on with the Ruins of America series. Here we are in Southern California desert. This is an abandoned structure close to 29 Palms, the Marines military base. Today we're, we are going to be out in Joshua Tree, California, Landers, California. We are going to be looking at abandoned homestead shacks. There's over 2,000 of them littered across the California desert. But before we get there, again, here we are in 29 Palms. This would have probably been a ho motel, motel circa 1930s, 40s, 50s. This would have been the same time that the five-acre people would have been creating their homesteads out in the desert, five-acre parcels. But before we get there, we'll take a look at this abandoned motel. There are signs all around us of the decline of the American Empire, and we are going to document the downfall. There's no reason to put our heads in the sand. We must come face to face with our decline. When I first hit Joshua Tree, I stayed in a pretty good location. There are some nice houses out in Joshua Tree. I stayed in Joshua Tree Highlands. Very, very nice location. It sits high above the valley, so you have a very good look. So I do recommend if you come to Joshua Tree, staying in this residential area is a good idea. I air and Airbnb a residential house. You have a beautiful view. So there are some beautiful houses in the area, but we're going to be focusing on the abandoned ruins. Now this is an advertisement back in the 1950s. They called it the Joshua Cabin. Other names were Jack Rabbit Cabin, Jack Rabbit Shack, Jack Rabbit home. The premise is this. These are homesteads. The government was going to give you five acres of property. This would have been, there was an act in 1938. Congress passed the Small Track Homestead Act, or in 1938 they passed the Federal Small Track Act of 1938. What it comes down to is in the 40s and the 50s, the government would give you five acre parcel but you had to build a structure on it that's what we they called it the jackrabbit cabin or the joshua cabin now a lot of these are old, a lot of these are still owned by old people who do not want to give them up we're going to go take a look at them this one was kind of scary because it has birds living in there So as you can see, Mother Nature and the climate takes its toll on these abandoned buildings. The pigeons and the birds and the animals take them over. Believe it or not, there are still 1950 stuff in these shacks, like the stove, stoves from the 1950s, abandoned furniture. And a lot of these properties are still owned by older people or that want to hold on to them. And then, of course, when the old people die, they're handed down to children who don't, do not want them. And that's why we see over 2,000 of these structures in the area. Now, there are many locals in the area who want them tore down. But these are historic buildings. This is part of American history. As we said, these homes or these shacks were built in the 1940s and 50s because the government passed an act, the Federal Small Track Act of 1938, part of the Homestead Act. It gave Americans five acres. All you had to do was build a shack on it. There were companies in the area that would build a shack for you, 
the companies that built these things, they would call the people, their customers, they would call them the five acre people. So if you were coming in from LA looking for a weekend camp and you hired a local business to build this shack for you, they were called the five acre people. Now you have to understand, this would have been during the Great Depression. The, the Congress passed the act during the Great Depression. One of the reasons why Congress would have done that is to pacify the people. People did not have jobs, they had nowhere to live. By giving them a homestead, you would be making them happy, give them something to work for. It's funny how time cycles. I think we're, I think we're in that same cycle today that people do not have jobs, they do not have hope. Maybe the next step for the government will to be come up with a homestead act. You have to remember that almost 90% of Nevada is government land. If the government has 90% of Nevada and the people do not have any jobs, they have no hope, why not give them a five acre parcel? It's funny how time cycles. Maybe we'll be seeing this in the near future that the government will give you a five acre plot out in the Nevada desert two hours from Las Vegas and you'll be able to build yourself your homestead. Now some of these are still, people still live in some of these. And of course the trending thing to do is to buy one of these, fix it up and Airbnb it for people who want to go out and see Joshua Tree National Park. As you know we're not, this is very very close to Joshua Tree National Park. Here we're going to just drive by and see some other ones. They were all, they all had to be small. The government required them to be small. Once you got them built, the government would give you a title and you would own the five acres. This is harsh country in the summertime. This is desert, 110 degree, 115 degree climate in the summertime. It can be harsh and brutal out here. So as you can see, many of them were abandoned. We're just going to go take a look at some of these. There's probably over 2,000 of these abandoned structures all over the Joshua Tree Landers area. Very close to 29 Palms Marines installation. The biggest marine base in the country is not far from this area here. As you can see, lots of them are for sale. I'm just guessing, but I believe this parcel here would probably cost you about 20, 30,000, I'm just guessing. So here we'll go take a look at another one. This one also was filled up with old vintage merchandise, but it's abandoned. The one thing that I found amazing back in the 1940s and 50s, the government cared more about its people. LA only had about a million people in the LA area, but they thought that was a crowded city. So the government partly gave out these five acre parcels as a weekend retreat for the people who lived in the city. They could go out and have a weekend cabin. The government cared about its people back years and years ago. I mean, you might have to go back 80, 90 years before when there were people in the government who actually cared about you. Today, the government doesn't care about you. You're a number. You're to be harvested. But as I said, some of these shacks still have the old stuff in them. The first, the people who would have lived in this, or the people who would have bought this, it probably would have been from LA, possibly. They were called the five acre people. But again, there were people who came in from back east, Pennsylvania, Ohio, looking for their homestead in a new, in America. They traveled west. Go west, young man. This would have been the perfect situation. The government gives you five acres and you build a shack. So we'll just take a look. This area here, the Joshua Tree area, is about two hours east of L.A. 
since I missed this soul the other day, but I haven't found out. And that's that home there is very salvageable. I could salvage that thing in two weeks could you? with my crew. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you're a bush oaky man, you just got to get out there and work. A bush oaky. You got that right. <laughs> you just got to get out and work. But there's tons of property uh, around here. You just got to kind of do what you're doing. I owned a bunch over here and I sold it. When you say homestead, the people came out here. They just they just they didn't pay for the it. Government it gave them five acres and yeah. didn't have to pay for it. The government. Gave you them. had to build a home. But you had to build. Oh. And, and it was, uh, these homes, I don't think the government paid for these homes. No. Uh, but the government did give the land away. Yeah, that, that's right. And the, the people 50, 50s. built the cabins themselves? Uh, to they, be. Yeah, they look similar. All of yeah, them look Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I but think the government uh, built I love it out here because yeah. it's all it's in the solar system. Then I go to this mountain here, Goat Mountain. Go to a big home water district and ask them what they want to turn the water on. Yeah. Because you and I are paying for that pipeline that somebody didn't pay for. Uh -huh. And I hear it's about six thousand bucks. I could be wrong. Uh, I've got my water bill the other day, and it is one hundred and thirteen dollars wow. for two months. You pay for somebody's water. Okay. And, and but that all this water is potable water. This is San Bernardino water. People don't realize. I've got a hundred and twenty uh, pounds pressure at my place. So you got tons of water. Mm -hmm. It's and I. Being a farmer, I put everything under drip irrigation. Everything I own is under drip irrigation. And guess what? That the water company put big meter, new meter in my place, and I think they're the ones that use all the water. Yeah, well, it just got full of them. Okay. So there we had a chat with one of the locals. He called himself a bush oaky, and he was familiar with all of these abandoned buildings. Here it looks like one has been, has an add-on, probably from the 70s, 60s or 70s. They put a little mobile home add-on many people living out here many people like it it's out there away from the bright lights of LA some people feel like they're living off the grid here now there is water like I said like the old man was saying there's water lines out here six thousand possibly six thousand dollars if you want to hook up a meter and as you can see here there are people coming in who are remodeling these old buildings and airbnb -ing them to people who are going out to the national park. Many people come in from Europe, Asia, and they want to see. This is a very unique area with all the Joshua trees. As you can see here, many, many Joshua trees. It can be a very, very beautiful place. In the summertime, it can be brutally hot. Now, here we are. We're back in 29 Palms. We're driving along 29 Palms out by the Air Force Base. Well, and this probably would have been a pizza joint or a bar in the 1960s, 70s. The military guys would have came here and got a beer or a pizza. Many abandoned buildings in America. We are on hard times. Many people are in denial. But I am not in denial. I am going to document it. We are going to document this for future generations. To tell them what the banking cartel can do. When you put the banks in the hands of a small group of people and they control all the money, this is what happens. They give the money to their friends. You know what happens to you and I? Well, you already feel the pain. If you're watching this video, you feel the pain. One mysterious structure we found, getting close to the, we were not on, I repeat, we were not on the military installation, but very close to it. And we found these cement block structures. They were sort of mysterious, painted black. I have, I have to believe or guess or speculate that they have something to do with military training, military training exercise but I don't know. If anybody has any idea what these structures are, please leave a comment. This is very close to the 29 Palms military base, marine base. So, these, this is a continuation of the American Empire in Decline series, the ruins of America. After this, we took you have if you're going to go in this area, you have to take a trip through the Joshua Tree National Park. You can drive it. It takes an hour to drive around it, and you'll exit close to the Marine 
military base. And I'm going to show you an interesting rock structure at the end of the video. But again, we have no idea what this is. Now here we go. The Joshua Tree National Park, there was a rock and it was sort of winking at it, saying, see you later.